Hi everyone, I'm Dora with the Healy Technology Report. Today we're going to have a look at how to bridge a 3CX phone system with a Yaystar S-Series. Now what this means is you you have uh, two different phone systems. You have a, a Yaystar S-Series and a 3CX and you have some extensions on the Yaystar, some trunks on the Yaystar, some extensions on your 3CX and some trunks on your 3CX and you want the extensions from uh, the Yaystar to be able to dial extensions directly onto the 3CX and the other way around. So uh, this is called uh, bridging and we're gonna go in and see how this is done. And the way we do this is we're first gonna have a look at the Yaystar phone system and see how we get calls over to the 3CX and then from the 3CX, how we get them over to the Yaystar uh, but before we get into that, check out our, our online store at buyphonesonline.ca. We've got lots of great products, everything that we use uh, with our customers and that we recommend. But you do have to create an account and log in because the pricing is MSRP and we do have great pricing, but you need to see that. Uh, to see that, you need to log in. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Helia Canada. Uh, and as we have more videos coming out, you'll get notified. Uh, of those. Uh, so without further ado, let me jump in and uh, show you how this is done. Okay, so here we have the S100 and so uh, the starting place is to have an actual trunk. So we're going to create a trunk that's a peer-to-peer -peer trunk uh, that connects from, uh, so let's have a look here, trunks, 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 second page. Uh, here we go, SBTA 3CX. So this is a trunk uh, that connects from uh, the S100 to 3CX. And so we have the IP address of the 3CX server here. In this case, it's a public IP address. And so what this means is uh, all calls uh, will be uh, that go out on this trunk will be sent directly to 3CX. And we'll have to set some things up on 3CX. Domain, this is not necessarily important. You do need to put something in here, but either uh, the IP address or the uh, uh, the public uh, DNS name is usually best. That's what it's usually what uh, the PBX uh, knows itself as. The rest of this information is all pretty standard. Nothing to do there. Now, as soon as we have a trunk set up, the next thing we need to do is set up a outbound route so that uh, the phone system knows when to send calls out on this trunk uh, to the 3CX. So let's have a look at call control and let's go have a look at outbound routes. And so here we have SBTA 3CX. So let's edit this one. Okay, so we've got a dial pattern here. It starts with a five and then four digits. So uh, in my case here, the extensions on both the 3CX and the S-Series are both four digits extensions. And that's why I have one, two, three, four X's. The X's represent numbers. So this is five. Uh, followed by four more numbers. Now, to make a call out on this trunk to go to 3CX, uh, you have to dial uh, five first. So, for instance, if I want to dial extension 1000 on my uh, on the 3CX side, I would pick up a phone on the S100 side and dial 51000, and that would tell the system uh, that the call is for 3CX and for its extension 1000. So here we've got uh, strip one that means to take off uh the five the first digit and so it will be sending one zero 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 extension one thousand over to uh 3cx to process okay so this is always going to go out on our uh trunk that we set up the sip here and then uh, all of these particular extensions are able uh, to dial uh, extensions out on the 3CX side. There's no password, nothing else really to be done here. Okay, so now that we have an outbound route, calls are going to be sent over to 3CX and we need to set some stuff up on 3CX. So let's have a 3CX. You can see here I'm on my SIP trunks. I have a Yaystar S100 trunk here. So I've got, uh, let's edit this. This is the trunk name, edit. 
Uh, and so we've got the public IP address. This is where calls are going to come from. Um, and it's also when they send calls out from 3CX, this is where those calls are going to be sent to. Uh, so we've uh, used the IP address and outbound proxy. Uh, under authentication here, do not require it because the calls going back and forth between these two IP addresses are going to be trusted. So there is no username and password. There is a route to information here, but I don't actually, like while this is required on 3CX, I don't think it takes any impact at all because you do need to specify a DID uh, within 3CX. It will not take a generic uh, DID or an unspecified DID. So this, this seems to be largely irrelevant. Now, uh, this is super important. Uh, we need to put in every single extension of every, uh, every destination that we expect to be used. So what happens is a call gets sent from the Yaystar uh, phone system, uh, four digit extension, if that four digit extension is not listed here, uh, 3CX is gonna reject that call. So it's not gonna send it to a, a default destination or anything else, it's just gonna be rejected. So you absolutely need to put uh, every extension here. You'll notice that even though we're asking for a five digit uh, a, a number to dial within the S series, these are all the four digit extension numbers. Okay, the rest of this information is uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, this is, what are we looking at? Uh, this is, okay, there's one other thing here that's super important. Now, in the two host part here, uh, we did have to change this. So I, I'm not actually sure what the default value is. It was probably that. But what we were finding is in the two address of invite packets going from 3CX to the uh, S-series, so outbound from 3CX, it was actually including the uh, IP or the server name from 3CX. And so when they arrived to Yaystar, Yaystar uh, was rejecting those calls. And so what we need to do is make sure that it has the two includes the uh, Yaystar PBX name, which is uh, the IP address or the uh, the host name that the PBX is known as. So we have a gateway host port is, you have to set that. Okay, so we've got calls from uh, the Yaystar phone system. We have a trunk, it goes over the trunk, it's received by the trunk on the 3CX side. And then um, we need to look at the inbound rules. So let's have a look at inbound rules. And this is going to tell uh, how the extensions are uh, routed in. So here we have the Yaystar S100 trunk. When it receives a 1014 extension, it's going to route it to 1014, extension 1014, during in-office hours. And then in outside office hours, it's going to route it to extension 1014. And then whether it goes to voicemail or wh whatever, uh, call routing options are set uh, on uh, extension 1014 something completely different but you do have to set up inbound routes because there is no default route uh, for 3cx using a, a peer trunk like this okay now let's talk about outbound calls so if we pick up a call uh, a phone on the 3cx side and we want to dial an extension on the Yaystar side. It's very similar. Uh, we need to first have an outbound rule. Uh, and so let's have a look at those outbound rules. And you'll see here that we have a outbound rule called Yaystar S100. Now this outbound rule, uh, any number starting with five, and have uh, has a length of five. So again, the extension length is four on both sides, but we're looking for a number that starts with five and a total of five digits. And then what we do down here is we strip off the first digit. So uh, the, the uh, extension um, that is going to be sent to the Yaystar is actually a four digit extension. So for instance, I pick up a call on the 3CX side, I dial uh, extension 2000. So I'm gonna dial uh, 
52000. Now, I actually don't think there is an extension 2000 on the on the A-star side on this example, but it would be any extension number that did exist. So 52000, it would strip off the first digit, which is uh, the 5, and it would send four digits over onto the A-star S100. So now we've got the trunk already set up, and if we go back to the A-Star interface here. I'm gonna cancel this and we're gonna have a look at the inbound routes. And then we have an inbound, it's probably on the second page here. Uh, ba -ba -ba, let's see. You know, I don't, actually this, uh, we don't actually need an inbound route. What 3CX does is it, um, it will send over the extension, but on the A-Star side, it's going to look for a match. So you certainly can set up a special inbound route. Uh, so for instance, uh, 2000 doesn't exist, but we could set up a dial pattern for 2000. And when someone dialed 2000, it would actually dial the reception phone at extension 1002. But if uh, the extension number that's sent does match up to an existing extension uh, on the A-Star system, the call flows through without any additional work. So that is how we configure uh, the A-Star and 3CX to bridge calls uh, between them. Uh, if you're having trouble with that, we do have text that you can call here at, uh, at Helia. Uh, number is on the uh, side here. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Let's uh, go to the end. So that was how to bridge uh, phone calls from 3CX and extensions from 3CX to uh, the Yaystar S series and the other way around from Yaystar into 3CX. Please check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Canada and also our online store buyphonesonline.ca and you do need an account to see all the special pricing. Uh, I'm Dar with the Healy Technology Report. Thanks for watching.